Hello beautiful planty people and here we are plant tour part two. Was that fun? Such a dork. Okay um for those of you who are new if you haven't seen plant tour part one or my fall 2020 plant tour part one uh, I will link it right here. No here no here I think it's right here. Um, feel free to go watch that part. It really doesn't matter in which order you watch them. Um, but this is the second half to my fall uh, house plant tour of 2020. Um, so if you haven't seen that one yet, hi, hello, welcome. My name is Nikki. For those of you who are new here, this is my channel, Plants, Pots, and Whatnots. And for my gluttons for punishment who keep coming back for more, Thank you so much. It is amazing to see you as always. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for coming and for watching my uh, my videos. You guys could be doing anything right now and instead you're choosing to spend your time with me and I appreciate that so much. I can't even tell you. Well, I just did. But like a lot, but I can't explain the volume at which I appreciate it. This is, this is me, you get what you get. Um, okay, so anyways, without further ado, I'm just going to stop blabbering on. Uh, I would like to mention, please go ahead and follow me on my Instagram account. Here it is, it's plants, pots, and whatnots. And uh, we do all kinds of fun stuff over there. I do little, you know, like questions and have you guys answer it. I'll do polls. Um, sometimes I get video ideas or, hey, would you like to see this or this? And that kind of thing. So if you're not following me over there, oh, and plant updates all the time. So if you're not following me over there already, please go ahead and check that out if you're an Instagrammer. Um, and yeah, it's just a good time over there. So come hang out with me over there on the daily. Okay. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into plant tour part two. <laughs> that rhymed. Okay guys, we're just gonna pick up where we left off. So this is my front picture window. And we will start over here on this side. So the first plant, oh my toe. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the first plant that we have here is my um, variegated bird of paradise. Look at the leaves on this thing. This is the newest one that just came in. It's hard to see because of the light, but this one has a lot of that limey yellow color. There's some of the older leaves. It's a really beautiful plant. So lucky to get my hands on that one. Um, definitely don't run across them often, so really, really blessed to have that plant. <laughs> uh, so below that we have my <clears throat> Philodendron Gloriosum. So this was the top cutting, nope, yes, yes, <laughs> this was the top cutting when I did my um, big chop, so there's her other leaf, and then her other one's down in there. So she's doing really well, if I can move this one, you can see that she is putting out a new leaf there already, so that's great to see. It's always nice after you chop the crap out of a plant to see it actually growing and doing well. Because <laughs> it does. It makes you a little nervous. Because as confident I was as I was that everything was going to be okay, there's that little nagging thing in the back of your head that goes, but what if it isn't? But what if you really screwed it up and you lose the whole plant? Whew. So I didn't. <laughs> Yay me. Uh, so down here we have another beauty. So this is my um, Philodendron White Princess. Look at those leaves. The variegation on this plant is just beautiful. Absolutely love it. Beside that is a plant that I just chopped yesterday because it was growing like up and then bending over here. Uh, so this is my Syngonium Pink Splash. So I just propagated this guy again. So I cut her right there. And I think that one was cut into three nodes. 
So I'm going to have another three of those here soon. Behind that we have the beautiful, thanks Eli, <laughs> we have the beautiful Anthurium Viterifolium. So this guy's doing really well. This is a new leaf on the way out right now. I love this plant. I really do. <laughs> Although I'm trying to currently get it to grow more upright. It's kind of growing funky, but that's okay. She's still pretty. So next to that <laughs> is, this is not its permanent place, but I took my Florida ghost from out of here and um, I put this little guy together the other day, so I just kind of threw it here. So if you'll recall from my Hoya collection video quite a few months back now, this Hoya Imbricata <sighs> fell apart. Yeah. So he has been growing in my greenhouse since then, and I just put him on this little um, piece of driftwood with some moss tied it all down with fishing line so that is where he is growing right now we'll see how it works I have to spray it like frequently that's the thing with um, and when you plank any kind of uh, plant like that is I mean that moss dries out so incredibly quickly so I'm constantly having to spray it but you know it is what it is and we'll see how it goes Below that is the beauty herself. This is my Monstera Albo. So she just unfurled this leaf yesterday. I'm so glad it's fully open for you guys to see. And it is another half moon leaf. Look at that. So pretty. This plant has just been amazing to own and so happy <laughs> that I got her. So that is her. That was the first new leaf that she put out since I repotted her, so it was really nice to see that, that leaf come out. Below that is just this um, Florida ghost that you saw um, in my previous video, so I'm not going to go there. And then let's move over here. So this <laughs> is my Philodendron Florida Beauty. She um, was just recently cut. You guys watched that video from my last haul, but she does have some auxiliary buds. Um, there's one right here. You can see that. And that one is starting to, to push out a little bit <laughs> right there. Anyways, so it is going to regrow for me. I just have to keep telling myself that. It was quite difficult to cut but uh, she's still doing great and she's going to grow back yes <laughs> above her we have this beautiful plant here that I got from uh, John um, he's on YouTube Jonathan Sutherland Sutherland if I could speak so it is finally pushing out a new leaf since I got it and I am so stoked look at that Oh, I'm so excited. They come out this incredible burgundy color, the whole leaf, and they are so pretty. That one is a philodendron bronze, I believe they refer to it as. Um, so it's a cross between a philodendron pedatum and a philodendron uh, black cardinal. But they're just so cool. Love it. Uh, while we're up here, let's go over to this one. So this is my Anthurium Bakery, uh, Baker Eye. One of these days. Um, anyway, gorgeous plant. This one has done so much better since I put it in this pot that retains moisture a little longer. They do dry out really, really fast. Very thirsty plant. And so uh, she seems to just be thriving in this pot. So that is great to see this is her new leaf here hasn't quite hardened off yet and then up here we have this cute little full pot <laughs> of uh, cluster repens it is quite bushy and pink and gorgeous and I just love it let me zoom in look 
how cute that is. I might end up moving her. She is directly underneath a light, which doesn't seem to bother her, but I think, I don't know, she's getting these cute little speckles on it. <laughs> so I think it might be because of the light, so I might pull her back a bit and see if that color changes. Down here we have, um, now I don't know if you guys saw or not, but I did chop my um, philodendron varicosum into, I think I got four nodes plus the top cutting off of her after um, air layering it. So this is what we have left on that side and then we've got another plant on this side here that's starting to grow new leaf. Then behind that we have <laughs> my variegated bilati, but the green part, <laughs> if you guys watched that video. Um, so I'm still kind of hopeful. There's a new leaf that it's working on right there, so I'm kind of hopeful that that leaf may be variegated. I mean, I doubt it because it's just been green leafed after green leaf, but you never do know, you know? The next one, usually I have my Philodendron Varicosa Melanocrysum here, but if you follow along with my Instagram, you may or may not know that I chopped it yesterday. Um, I air layered it quite a while ago, and I went ahead and made all the cuts yesterday. So this is the, this is kind of like a mid cutting, but it, it was growing all wonky because it grew off the top of the moss pole and then like fell sideways so it's kind of growing like this way do you know what I'm saying <laughs> anyway so it will eventually straighten itself out and uh, then I'll get a moss pole in there and she will be fine but the leaves were starting to get really really big and they were just pulling look at the backs of those leaves Whew. Um, it was just pulling the whole plant over so she will straighten out soon but until then, she just looks a little weird. <laughs> okay, the next plant that we have here is this new guy. Look at that beautiful new leaf. So this is a variegated philodendron giganteum, and it really does live up to his name. Um, these get absolutely massive. If you get a chance, Google it, <laughs> um, or you can watch the video where I hauled this guy, and uh, there is a little photo in there of how absolutely massive they get and uh, it's just a gorgeous plant I saw a picture of one a little while back and I knew I had to try to find one and um, they're just I mean like I don't know what else to say so I'm very excited we do have some new growth right there so she is going to be putting out a new leaf soon I can't wait <laughs> I'm very excited Aren't I always excited? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, let's move up to the top here. I'm just going to grab my ladder because I can't reach. Whew, this is quite the view. This is the view I should have showed you my Thai constellation from. <laughs> wow. Maybe it's time to start putting some of these on the floor. Okay. So, this guy is my neon pothos he is starting to trail down here as you can see and i love that when things are like coming over the edge of a shelf and trailing down so she is doing well for all of the uncommon <laughs> uncommon trendy plants that i have um i will always love all of my common ones and this neon pothos is no exception She's got a little crisp there. I'll have to fix that later. Anyway, that is my Neon Pothos. Beside her, we have this Syngonium Rei, which is really difficult to see. But she's doing really well. <clears throat> Some of these leaves, let me try to show you this one here, are really starting to lobe. You can see. Come on now cooperate there. really just just work with me anyway the leaves uh, the lobes are starting to kind of separate here a little bit 
Anyway, really cool plant. It vines and goes crazy everywhere. <clears throat> she was just watered, but this plant always seems to look like it's dry. So, I don't know. But it's really cool anyway. The leaves are kind of soft and velvety looking. Very pretty. To this side, God, it looks so dark. It's really not that dark, I promise. Um, so on this side we have my Anthurium clarinervium. And I stuck it up here. I won't be keeping it up here, but until I find a new place for her, she's up on top of the shelf. Uh, she's doing really well. She hasn't put out a new leaf um, in the last like month or so, but that was her most recent leaf right here. And it's a good size, I suppose. Now I don't know if this is some sort of hybrid <laughs> hybrid of um, the Clarinervium, but it doesn't seem to grow or to have the leaf shape that a lot of uh, Clarinerviums have. So I don't know. I just have this suspicion that it may not be a true Clarinervium. Anywho, <clears throat> moving along, we have my Marble Queen Pothos looking beautiful and she's starting to get a trail there so I'm excited about that not much else to say she's beautiful she's starting to trail and that's about all <laughs> so let me move my stool and I will get you to the last plant down here okay here we have my philodendron birkin who I like um, I, I mean this is not an ideal spot for him that leaf he put out was completely dark. <laughs> you can see that this one is split variegated. So is that one. <laughs> but these are normally what the leaves look like. Anyway, he's not doing the best up here. I don't think he's getting as much light as he should be getting. But he is growing a new leaf. He just grows kind of weird. I don't know. I don't know maybe this is one that I'll sell anywho that is the last one on top here but I'll take you over here so this is my burrow's tail or donkey's tail <clears throat> and it wasn't doing great in the last place I had it but it seems to really enjoy being right under this light and uh, it's grown quite a bit actually so that is her Below that we have, I took my two string of turtles plants and I put them both in this hanging wall planter. You guys have seen a million times. <laughs> and it seems to really be enjoying it there. It's really flowing over the side of the pot and I love how it looks. It looks like just a little waterfall of turtles. <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, while I'm up here, I'll show you these. <clears throat> so this was just a mixed pot that I did of um, Scindapsis pictus argeria, argerius, I can't even remember, and the, um, the satin pothos. So we're, I don't even, I can't even remember. Anywho, <clears throat> so it's doing really well. It even has, oh, let me zoom in. It's crawling up the wall right there. So these are um, climbers and they are shinglers. They will actually attach themselves to your wall. So FYI, <laughs> that's what's happening over there. And I'm just gonna let it, I think that is so cool. And I'm really excited to see where it's gonna go. And then below that we have, this is a mixed pot as well. So this is a golden pothos a Brazil philodendron and I believe yeah there's a tiny little cutting of Adansonii in there and um, this one as well well not this one as well let me I'm gonna have to stand on my couch if I fall call 911 okay oh god so th this also is from let me back up a little is from the plant up here so it has grown down here and it is growing around the corner. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Anywho, so those are those two. The last ones that I have over here are my little 
carnivorous plants. So these are all butterwort propagations. And then I have a sundew right there. Um, these guys I forgot to water for like, it was like a day extra than I should have watered it. And I think this one is not going to bounce back this time. I think she's done. Um, so that's my bad. But anyways, the butterworts are doing great. <laughs> okay, let's move to the other side of the room. Okay, I think I will start you on this side. So this is kind of right in my living room to dining room or dining room to living room area. Um, so first we have this beautiful Hoya. So this is a Hoya obovada. Uh, this leaf is starting to harden off now. That's his newest leaf. They are so pretty and I just love it. Love these big fat round leaves. It's probably up there in my <clears throat> excuse me it is probably up there in my top 10 Hoyas for sure I just love the leaves and in that sun they just have this shimmery mm -hmm. <laughs> down below that we have this Syngonium I don't know what kind it is to be honest maybe a white butterfly not sure oh, someone's trying to get a hold of me uh, but it is growing in this little well this little Fish bowl that I had uh, Marimo moss balls in it. I gave the moss balls to my daughter because she really wanted those. I am going to get some more. Um, but yeah, so it's just growing in sand that is, is at the bottom here. And there's a piece of driftwood and some rocks, and it's just kind of growing out of there. It's kind of cool. Okay, the next one here is my Monstera that has come back from the dead, <laughs> literally. So this plant I bought over a year ago um, and it got thrips or had thrips, I'm not sure which, uh, I'm leaning towards possibly had them already, um, but it was when I really didn't know a whole lot about thrips and didn't know what to look for. So this plant just got absolutely ravaged. and. So I cut the whole thing back. I still have the original plant. These were actually two cuttings that I took. Uh, water propagated them. They grew amazing roots. So I planted them into this pot when they got big enough. And she is starting to get big now. So this one and this one are her newest leaves. They're looking amazing. And she's looking so much better. You can still see a little bit of remnants here from the thrips damage. Um, but we have completely eradicated those and she is doing so well and she's really loving this spot right here. So that is her. I have a new reclaimed love for <laughs> just the plain Monstera Deliciosa. I just love them so much. They just really do make a statement and I can't wait to get these big huge leaves. Yeah. <clears throat> so then we just have my three little propagation balls that you guys see all the time. So in this one, there's a Standaliana cutting. You can see a little bit of white on that leaf here. I'm really hoping that this cutting does well. Um, I have found that they are excruciatingly slow to root. <laughs> um, the cutting is doing well, but the just the roots just aren't happening. Um, here I have a seaweed blue cutting with this good size leaf. And it's doing really well. I could probably take him out and pot him up because he's got a uh, nice root right there. Okay, the next plant that I have here is one of my um, Philodendron Brazils. So it is potted in the medium size wall planter. Um, all of those planters are linked in my Amazon storefront. And the link is in the description. I know I've showed you guys these a million times, but I swear by them. I have so many of them and I love them so much. Anyway, so that is that guy. It's doing really, really well. Those pots are self-watering if you want to use that feature as well. Let me get up here. So up here, other than the pot being crooked, which drives me nuts, there we go, is my Hoya Linearis. I just chopped um, some of this off and I'm propagating it. Um, I'm not sure that it's liking this spot, though. I don't know if there's enough light for it here, but I don't know. I mean, she's not dying, right? <laughs> Sometimes we just run out of space and I know that there's not enough 
light or certain conditions in a certain spot for that plant, but you're just like, where else do I put it? Do you guys have those moments? And then you feel bad about it, but you're like, I don't know where to put you. Anyway, so that's kind of what I'm experiencing with um, this one and that one. So that one is my Hoya Curtisii. <coughs> there she is there. It looks darker than it actually is, but um, she's doing well. I just cut a bunch of propagations off her as well. So we'll have some babies of that shortly. In the middle here we have my Pearls and Jade Pothos who has really, really started to take off. Now if you don't know, um, so there's many different types of pothos plants. So if you're used to the neon pothos, the marble queen pothos, so on, they are really fast growers. The pearls and jade, the mandula, um, they are slower growers. Now this isn't quite as slow as the mandula, but it's definitely not as fast as some of the other uh, traditional um, pothos, but it's doing really well. I love these new leaves that it's got. They're so pretty. Anyway, so she's really been thriving lately, so I thought I would show her off a bit, show her some love. Okay, let's move down. Okay, the last plant here that I wanted to show you is my amazing and lovely and beautiful and wonderful philodendron micans. I love this plant so much. Look at those leaves. They are just the prettiest things. They have this reddish hue on the back. It's the very iridescent. Look at this. So pretty. I love it. So it's doing really well. I've taken uh, a full pot of cuttings from these, so I have another one um, <clears throat> that you guys will see in a bit that uh, I just planted a bunch of leaf cuttings into, or node cuttings, I suppose. And so it's growing a nice full pot of those. But yeah, that is the last plant on this little area right here. Let's move around the corner. Okay, so the first plant that I'll show you here is this guy. So this is my Alocasia stingray. And you can see the leaves are just getting huge. Beautiful plant. Now these guys definitely benefit from overhead light, um, as do a lot of alocasias, because they will definitely lean to find the light. And um, when they get this big, similar to a fry deck, they will just kind of splay out. So the more direct light you can give them from the top, uh, the better, because that will kind of teach them to grow more upright. In my experience. <laughs> Okay, so behind that, let me just move her aside, we have the beast. So this is my Monstera Debaya. You can see these crazy aerial roots that she's got going on here. And they are running down. And if you can see, let me try to zoom in here. Actually, I'm just going to move this alocasia. One sec. Okay, so if you can see right in here, her aerial roots have actually clung um, right onto this board. And then she's got other ones here that have she has pushed right down into the soil there. So it's pretty wild. <laughs> but the coolest part, let me get you back up here. So she has now, this is her newest leaf. She has now started clinging to the wall, and oh, try to get you in behind here. That's really difficult to see. Can you see there her little grippies holding onto the wall? It's quite neat how it all happens. There's a really cool. <laughs> Isn't that weird? So they have all these little nubs, and these little nubs just grip whatever surface. Now it was funny because it wasn't crazy about gripping to this board, but as soon as it hit the wall it was like, ooh, yes, please, and it just thump. So <laughs> I'm really excited to see this guy get bigger. <clears throat> I know it's already big, um, but now that it's, it's gripped on here, I'm really excited about it getting huge and 
uh, once they get really big they will peel away from the wall so they'll no longer uh, climb or shingle and the leaves will come outwards and fenestrate so I'm really really excited to see that so that is her that is my Monstera Dubaia I'm gonna run quickly along this top shelf here nothing much has changed none of these plants grow overly quickly um, so you're really not missing a whole lot uh, so I have most of my cacti up here uh, there is my whale fin sansevieria couple cactus there uh, here we have a little butterwort let me see if you can see it better Hi. or a sundew sorry not a butterwort there she is in there these guys benefit from high humidity so it is nice if you can kind of keep some sort of little cloche on them beside that is a type of jungle cactus and uh, I've forgotten the name of it again um, but when these guys get in really bright light they will turn like a reddish and it was quite red when I bought it but obviously the light isn't as strong here as it was where I bought it and then they do get these little teeny white like balls on the side and uh, they look really cool so it's grown quite well actually it's gotten a lot bigger than it was when I first picked it up so yeah he's doing really well Behind there we have my variegated bear paw, looking super cute. We have my watermelon Ashidia, which has colored up beautifully. It looks so pretty. Can you focus on that? There we go. Isn't that neat? So she is loving life over there. <coughs> then we have another random cacti, I'm not really sure what it's called. Horthia, who is blooming, was blooming, uh, my rainbow cactus, my <clears throat> crafted, uh, what's it called, euphorbia of some kind, it's totally escaping me, anywho, another little cacti, here we have my philodendron rio, so this is the one I got from Paula, so it's starting to do really well, so I'm excited to get a big full pot of that. Okay, behind her, oh, let me get this out of the way, we have my booby cactus, and it has grown quite a bit, lots of new boobies, looking wonderful. Uh, back there we have a variegated euphorbia, and then we have my variegated string of nickels right there who's growing like crazy beside that we have oh my goodness come on um, I believe this is an Easter cactus if I'm not mistaken uh, really really pretty I love the red edges on the leaves I think they're just so pretty below that here we have a little um, the calico kitten. Um, oh my goodness. Crassula. Crassula calico kitten. Such a cute plant. These tiny cute little pink leaves. It's just adorable. And then we have some of my air plants. And if you look here you can see that my uh, Lithops is getting a new little baby growing out here, and this one right here, focusing, uh, this one right here has recently shed its older skin, and these two new ones have grown out of it. <laughs> it's the creepiest but coolest thing. <clears throat> here is my uh, air plant, so this is, I think it's called a Zero Graphica. Super cute. Here we have another Lithops, who really isn't doing anything. Uh, this guy I just moved over here, you saw him in my last tour, so I won't talk about him again. Another air plant and cacti. Right here, this is so cute, <laughs> this is a little baby Raven's Easy. Isn't it adorable? 
There we go. So cute. Behind that we have my ghost euphorbia. So when I got it, it was about right here. And it has put on all of this new growth. And if you look there, it has the teeniest, tiniest little... What is the deal with the focus? Anyway, it has the teeniest, tiniest little white... Leaves. So cute. Behind that, we just have a green apuntia, my green string of nickels, some other cacti. There is a um, uh, calanchoe. <laughs> my brain is not working right. <clears throat> this is my little Hoya Finlaysonii. That's his newest leaf right there. It's doing really well. This is a fairly new one. Here, let me take her down. Whoop. So this is a Christmas Carol Aloe. And as you can see, she is blooming. The little blooms are so cute. Love this aloe. We will get her back in there. Whoop. Beside her we have this Hoya... Oh, really Nikki? Oh, Rotunda Flora, sorry. And uh, so this is the little cutting I got from my girlfriend Tammy. And it's doing really well. She's putting out all kinds of new leaves. And doing well. Okay, so let's go ahead and move down to the next shelf. Okay. Starting down here on the right, we have my variegated Hoya Wayetii. So it's really, really cool. Um, I had one of these a little over a year ago, and it didn't go so well. <clears throat> but I have figured out how to take care of um, them now, and it is growing so much better this year. Look at those new leaves. So pretty. In front of that here we have my Monstera Siltipicana. I... Can you not? Just go over there. Um, I'm having a hard time with this plant. I mean, it is getting some new growth and whatnot. I think this might be a little bit too bright for her. Um, I think they do require a little bit lower light, so let me know if you know I just can't seem to get this thing to grow no matter what I do. So any tips for that one would be greatly appreciated. <clears throat> Behind that here we have my King Anthurium, who is doing better. There's only like a little spot there and right here. But other than that, this leaf is holding up so much better. I think we've worked out all the kinks and taking care of that. So hopefully we will see a new leaf here shortly. So cross your fingers and toes for me. <laughs> Beside that we have, um, this is my Hoya Obscura who has really just taken off in the last I would say month to two months. Uh, you can see there that we have some gorgeous sun stress there and some, <laughs> some cute little leaves coming out. They are so adorable. But it's doing really well. I took some cuttings off this recently <clears throat> and they are rooted already. But yeah, that is my Hoya Obscura. Now down here are two new plants that you guys have not seen yet. So <laughs> this is a baby philodendron 69686. And I got this one from this new shop <clears throat> that I found or they found me, I think. Um, it is called the Rad Plant Shop. So they are located in Toronto. Uh, this is actually their logo here. Rad Plant Shop. So sweet. 
absolutely lovely to deal with and um, this is a plant that I was looking for and they reached out and said that they had one and uh, I'm so happy that they sent it to me so I can't wait to see it grow it's got a new little leaf coming in there they have a really unique leaf shape they kind of give those <sighs> Gyopii vibes sort of kind of maybe I don't know they have these really long lobes anyway they look really cool so I'm excited to see that one grow and give you guys updates beside that we have the beautiful Amidrium silver look at the color isn't that beautiful this is its newest leaf they are such beautiful plants I snagged this one from Chloe at you grow Glen Coco and I am not disappointed I opened this and was just shocked um, it's the first time I had seen one in person and that color it's like a bluish greenish silver and it's just stunning so I'm really excited to see that guy grow The next one we have here is my little philodendron, Brantianum. Um, we put him on a little mini moss pole that I made out of a toothpick, not a toothpick, oh my goodness, Nikki, really, a chopstick, some kind of ick, and um, in hopes that we would see some bigger leaves. So far, this is the first one that it's put out since, and it's not bigger, but I don't know, I'm still holding on to hope. So we'll see how she goes. Uh, behind her, let me just move this guy out of the way, is my Monstera Siltipacana. I didn't call that other one a Siltipacana, right? It's a Stanaliana. Did I screw that up? I might have. <coughs> I'll, I'll fix it, netting. Anyway, <laughs> so this is my Siltipacana. And uh, so there's a couple different cuttings in here. They're doing really well. I've taken... Um, some cuttings off of it so I'm growing some new ones but it's doing really well nothing crazy significant as far as like any big cool leaves or anything like that so but that's probably not the most ideal spot for it it is getting a decent amount of light but I don't know I don't know <laughs> okay if we look here oh, let me move this one oh goodness so this is my uh, terrarium. You guys saw me build this last year, early this year. I can't even remember. Um, it is growing in really well. I did have this in a spot that didn't have the best light. So these two little um, bromeliads stretched out quite a bit. And there's a lot of new green growth. So I'm going to have to do some trimming on that again here soon. But she's doing well. In front of her, we have one of my philodendron melanocrysum cuttings. So this guy is all rooted and growing wonderfully now. Looking great. I love the new leaves when they come in. They have this beautiful like bronze shimmer. They're so pretty. Beside that, we have this new one as well, um, but you guys have seen this one already. So this is my Philodendron Jose Buono, Bueno, who I have affectionately named Enrique. And I'm really excited to see this guy grow. <laughs> they get these huge, beautiful, variegated leaves. And uh, I don't, like, honestly just can't wait. Behind that, we have my Anthurium um, Esmeraldens, and you can see I mentioned in my last video with my Philodendron Esmeraldens, they have this very bright vein down the center, and so they are kind of reminiscent of each other in that regard. Uh, this is its newest leaf. It's kind of hard to see with that light shining on it, but it has this beautiful red um, tint to them, and even the older leaves, it's really difficult to see. But they do have this darker that it kind of keeps as the leaf matures. 
but really, really stunning plant. So that leaf is new and um, still growing. So pretty. Okay. Down here we have three little Christmas Carol aloe babies. So when I got that Christmas Carol aloe from Liam at John Street Gallery, um, or John Street Shop, I think he's going by, and um, it had three little pups, so I took them off and I'm going to grow those out. And um, one of them is going to be for my daughter, probably one for her friend, and then I'll have another little baby. Behind that, let me just get this guy out of the way, is my Crystallinum Silver, my Anthurium Crystallinum Silver. Um, she's doing okay. Nothing really to write home about. I haven't gotten a new leaf in a little bit. But um, she's really pretty, nonetheless. <laughs> in front and center here, we have this weirdo. This is my uh, Philodendron Tortum. They get these very frond-like leaves. And Jordan was looking at this the other day and he thought it was just so weird the way their leaves come out. Hopefully you can see that okay. But they come out really weird and all kind of curly. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest thing? And then they just kind of unfold into these big, beautiful frond-like leaves. That's a cool one. <clears throat> Beside that, we have this Aglionema rotundum, I think they're called. So they kind of look like um, Calathea ornata in, in their coloring. If you can see that. Um, Paula gave me this from a plant that she got. And it was quite some time ago and I still have not seen a new leaf on this plant. So... But I mean, it looks good. It's healthy. I just, it's just not growing at, at all. I don't know. Too much light, maybe? Not a clue. Let me come around the corner here. So this is a really cool anthurium. This is an anthurium furcatum. This is her newest leaf. Now when these leaves come in, she's got a new one coming in right here. And let me try to get you in a little closer here. So they come in this really shiny, um, almost like a wine color, and then once that opens up, it's this gorgeous, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you've seen, you saw this one when it came out, um, but it's this beautiful, super shiny wine colored leaf, and it is beautiful. I love it. So anyway, and it's also, if you want a really fast-growing anthurium, definitely this one is a candidate. This thing throws out new leaves every probably three to four weeks, which is crazy, in my opinion, for an anthurium. <laughs> anyway, really cool plant. Can't wait to see that new leaf open up. Okay, let's move down a shelf. Okay, we'll start on the bottom here. There's not a whole lot of plants here. So this guy I've had for a while, um, this is my watermelon peperomia, um, which I think is only one of the two only peperomias that I have. Um, you guys all know how I feel about peperomia. <laughs> uh, so I have this one and I have my prostrata or my string of turtles. Um, now this one a while back had a nice bout of thrips. But she has bounced back, so these are some of the new leaves here, which look great. Doing much better. Um, but yeah, not much to say about her. I mean, she was sick, but now she is better. Beside that, we have the beautiful, and because she was beside this guy, of course, she had thrips as well. But now we have gotten rid of those. This is my Calathea orbifolia. Uh, I believe this is the only Calathea in my collection. <sighs> Dirt. Get off her leaf. Uh, anyway, I'm finally getting the hang of this guy. So she's got some new leaves here that are just beautiful. And I refuse to give up on this plant because I have total plant goals of having this look like uh, Hannah's from Tropical Plant Addict. I want this big, huge, beautiful Orby. 
So that is her. Then we have some fall fakies there. Behind that we have, I'm trying to get this out of the way. So this is a philodendron, oh no. <clears throat> I think it's Augusta something. Oh Lord, I can never remember what the name of this. Anyway, it also had thrips <laughs> along with the other two. Um, so we have passed that. Now I've got to move her because she is right up at the top here now. Beautiful leaves on this plant though. Really, really like it. But she's got to get out of there. So I need to find a new home for her. Beside her, we have my Hoya Wayetii. Who was thirsty. So I gave her a drink a couple days ago. And she's just starting to kind of bounce back from that now. Over here we have my pickle plant. Which you can see has gone absolutely nuts it really really does like this spot so it is growing all out here all over here it's just wild but such a cool weird plant <laughs> i love it so much and then here is a coleus that i had planted to put outside um this past season but it didn't get there so i believe this is called a dark prints I want to say um, but these leaves get so incredibly cool looking and uh, I just brought them in and put them in this pot not long ago but I will definitely keep you guys in loop because they get so stunning they get these almost black leaves with this red center and they're just absolutely beautiful coleus so that is her and that is all for that shelf. I have one more shelf to show you and I will let you go. I hope this video is not too long. Okay, I lied. I totally forgot there's a top of the shelf. Um, so, the first one here is this Triscantia Nanook. Um, this plant is always so incredibly beautiful in the garden centers, but everyone I've spoken to, when they bring them home, they get leggy, they get these brown spots. Um, I have tried it in nice bright light, tried it in bright indirect light, and now it is sitting over here in less than ideal light because I'm just over it. I don't know what this plant wants from me. <laughs> so if you're one of those people who can keep these beautiful, please tell me your secrets because I don't got it. <laughs> and I want to because it's so pretty. Behind that we have my Eglionema Pink Moon. And this is really cool. This entire uh, stock here has a variegation on it. So there's some there. And then this newest leaf. Look at that. Isn't that cute? But this plant is so incredibly low maintenance. Um, I've had this plant for probably over a year now. I have forgotten to water it for like month, two months on end, and it is still just kicking out leaves. It's wild. Love that plant. <laughs> the next one I have here is this guy. Um, for the life of me, I cannot recall what it's called, um, but it's done really, really well too. It's a pink something, I think. But it's really, really pretty gets these beautiful pink and green leaves. And she's done really well too and is extremely low maintenance and just keeps on ticking. Uh, now this one I gotta get down and back up for you to see. So this one here in this beautiful pot that Lucia from Lulu's Leaves gave me is my begonia. So this was my Etsy fail begonia. <laughs> And I'm hoping that the lighting isn't too weird here. Um, so this begonia I ordered off Etsy. And there's the leaves there. Focus. There you are. And uh, when it got to me it had one or two leaves I think. And since then she has just taken off. She is wild and crazy. And uh, I just love that begonia. 
I think that and the cane begonias are the only ones that I can manage to keep alive. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, now back up. Here we have a little alocasia. So this is the alocasia bambino. Um, so it is kind of reminiscent of the alocasia poly, um, but the difference is the leaves are quite a lot more narrow and long and much smaller. These leaves don't get like crazy huge. So it's just chilling up here. And then beside that we have my Aglionema chocolate which has proven to be a little bit of a diva. Um, there's a new little plant growing right here. We got a new leaf growing in there. The backs of the leaves are really cool though. So pretty. And then here we have this lily that still hasn't bloomed, which is the same thing that you've been hearing from me for over a year now. <laughs> Maybe someday. Okay, I'm just going to take you on a quick run through this shelf and then um, that will pretty much be it. <laughs> um, actually up there we have my tricolor trade scantia. That one I battled with thrips through thrips with for a little while but is doing well now and uh, looking lovely in another that is the large wall planter. Next we have my beautiful um, Diffenbachia reflector. Uh, this I made the mistake of putting in a little bit lower light so she wasn't doing so great so I do have to find her a new spot she's gonna be too tall for this shelf here soon but they are so beautiful. So this one was a gift to me from Heather, one of my subscribers. Hi Heather, I love you to bits. And uh, yeah, but we're gonna get her in a new spot where she gets not lots of nice light and she's going to grow huge and beautiful. Beside her we have my Aglionema pink cyan, red cyan, I never remember. Anyway, so she's got a new little growth point here, so I bought this just as a little tiny plug. But she's doing quite well. I love, love these leaves. The color is so beautiful. Okay, in behind here, we have this pink Syngonium that we still haven't quite figured out what it is for sure. Um, <clears throat> the leaves are very dwarf, they don't get very big, and the entire leaf is pink. It's not a variegated plant of any kind. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty cool little Syngonium. Um, then we have this little Ripsalis, who also had thrips, but is doing really well now and growing all over the place. Down here, let me get off my ladder. <laughs> Is this pink? Uh, no, uh, Hoya Crimson Princess. That was difficult. So she's doing quite well. She's getting long. I love those leaves. Um, back here I just have a cutting of an Adansonii uh, that is for my daughter's friend. Back here we have this Philodendron Rush I believe I got it as. That was a beautiful gift from Liam at John Street Gallery. Then we have this little Hoya Carnosa here. Who I had forgotten to water for a bit so a couple of the leaves just aren't gonna make it but the rest of them is doing well. Uh, here we have my Cebu Blue Pothos. Or I believe it's actually an Epipremnum, right? It's not a Pothos. We call it Pothos? I don't know. Anyway, really really cool. This guy <laughs> I fought with him for a while because it had mealybugs of all godforsaken things and to be completely honest with you I would take thrips over mealies any day of the week. I find them so difficult to get rid of um, 
you can see like the adults and get them with your little q-tip or whatever but there are so many babies that are so much more difficult to see um, that can really be a challenge so I just really stayed on top of it um, and I'm hoping that we have gotten rid of them now because it's just such a beautiful plant uh, behind that we have this little dwarf syngonium uh, that I also got from John Street Gallery. I believe that is the Berry Illusion Syngonium. Super cute. And down a shelf. <clears throat> oh, I forgot about this little Peperomia. <laughs> oh, me and Peperomias, I'm telling you. So this was a, a cute little gift I got from Chloe at um, You Grow Glen Coco. It was a little extra in a plant that I bought a while ago. Behind that we have um, a propagation pot of Philodendron Brazil. We have a propagation pot of Monster, uh, no, <laughs> Perfidifora tetrasperma. We have a propagation pot of Adansonii. And my philodendron mykins. Oh, and this guy. This is a wide leaf Monstera adansonii, and this is one that I'm growing out for my daughter. And the last shelf. <laughs> we have my main plant of um, Scindapsis argirius. Argeria? I don't know. This one also battled with mealybugs, which let me tell you, with all of the leaves it's got and everything, was a total nightmare to deal with. Um, but I think we have also nipped that in the bud. But I just love these leaves. They are just so pretty. And last but not least, we have this other Hoya Carnosa. This might be like a splash variety. The leaves look quite different. Um, but this was the very first Hoya that I ever purchased and when I bought it off this lady on Barrage Sale, I got it home <clears throat> and it was covered in mealybugs and so I messaged her and I was like, hi, I just want to let you know and uh, she claimed that she hadn't seen them but I mean, it was very, very obvious. But anyway, she's doing well now. Okay. Well, folks, oh, I forgot this guy. This is my little queen, my crimson queen propagation. <laughs> Sorry, but that is pretty much it, guys. In the first one, you saw all these beautiful things, so go back and watch those if you missed it. Also, if you haven't seen anything in particular that you know I have, it's probably down in my Mars Hydro grow tent, which I am loving. <laughs> And that's it. So what did you think? Now you've seen plant tour part one and plant tour part two, hopefully. Or if this is your first part, you can go watch part one. Anyway, <laughs> um, a lot of, of growth and everything has happened throughout the uh, spring and summer months. If you look at my plant tour at the beginning of spring compared to now, it's just absolutely crazy and all the new plants and it's been a really great growing season um, for me here at Plant Spots and Whatnots, and uh, just feel really blessed. So we have all kinds of other new content coming up, so make sure that you um, are subscribed and you turn your notify bell on because we're just getting started into the fall and winter months, and um, because there's not a whole lot of repotting and buying plants, I have to find other things to occupy your time and I do. So, <laughs> I would like to thank all of you so much for liking and watching and commenting and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It is a huge help. It is a huge help <laughs> to my channel and I really do appreciate it. So, I will let you go and remember that I love you all to bitty bits and I would like you all to have a great day, night, week, month, year and I will see you in the next video. Mwah!